Welcome, everybody, yet another episode of the Wrestling vs. the World podcast. Hopefully you are enjoying your day. If not, let's see if this episode with nostalgia is going to kick right in for you. So we all know probably the most iconic design for the WWF slash WWE Championship over the years has been the winged eagle belt that we had from 1988 to 1998. And today's episode going to cover the timeline about the history of the championship itself which is going to be a nice little stroll down memory lane for those who enjoy that belt design. So to start right off the bat, the championship design belt design started on February 5th, 1988 on an episode of Main Event. Originally, we saw a backstage promo by Hulk Hogan hyping up his match against Andre the Giant as a WrestleMania 3 rematch. However, backstage the championship belt that he had at the time was not the Wing Eagle belt just yet. And immediately afterwards, Hogan would make his way to the ring and had the new Wing Eagle Championship belt design wrapped around his waist. However, Hogan would not keep this for long, as right afterwards he would drop the championship to Andre the Giant in a controversial fashion. In a storyline saying that Dave Hebner and Earl Hebner, who were actually brothers in real life, were actually two different guys. One of them had their plastic surgery done to the face to look identical to screw Hogan. After Andre won the championship, he would then sell it, slash hand it over, to the million dollar man Teddy Biasi, wrap around his waist. Thus, at the moment, kind of being recognized as a WWF champion until it was completely retconned eight days later. As on the February 13, 1988 edition of Superstars of Wrestling, on-screen president Jack Tunney announced that the championship would be vacant as the belt can only change hands via pinfall or submission in a match never surrendered. So therefore, for the first time in a little bit, there was no champion. And there will end up being a tournament for WrestleMania 4 to determine who would be the new champion in which Macho Man Randy Savage would become victorious by last defeating the Million Dollar Man Tate Biasi to become the new WWF champion. During this reign, he would end up turning heel on, by attacking Hogan, who he thought was a listener over Miss Elizabeth, leading to their match at WrestleMania 5, labeled as the Mega Powers Ex Implode, and Hulk Hogan would end up winning the championship once again at WrestleMania. Now, a little bit of things to know between here and the next title change. On the, February, on the November 25th, 1989 edition of Saturday Night's Main Event, Hogan would lose to the genius Lanny Poffo via countout. And afterwards, before the end of the program, Mr. Perfect would get his hands on the physical belt and smash it with a hammer, declaring that he would keep doing this no matter how many times that a championship belt is made in order to get a title shot against Hulk Hogan. Nevertheless, Mr. Perfect would never go on to win the championship anyway. The next person to hold the championship would end up being the Ultimate Warrior in the Ultimate Challenge, also with retaining his Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 6 against Hulk Hogan. And something to note during this title reign, after doing a bit of research, I found three different instances where the strap of the championship actually changed colors, similar to what happened with Warrior when he was Intercontinental Champion. Three examples that I found were April 28, 1990 edition of Saturday Night's Main Event, where Ultimate Warrior had a white strap on the belt, a few months later, on the July 28, 1990 edition of Saturday Night's Main Event, it had a light blue, stri light blue strap, and in Royal Rumble 1991, it came with a purple strap. And speaking of Royal Rumble 1991, those was the same night that he would lose the championship to Sergeant Slaughter, who at the point was an Iraqi sympathizer during his big heel run while there was that whole war going on in real life. Title reign only last a couple months as it would go back to Hogan at WrestleMania 7. Hogan would hold this belt for most of the year until he lost in controversial fashion at Survivor Series to The Undertaker thanks to interference by Ric Flair with a steel chair. This title reign would last less than a week as Hogan would temporarily win the championship back the following week at this Tuesday in Texas, but then on the December 7, 1991 edition of Superstars of Wrestling, on-screen president Jack Tunney once again vacated the championship similar to what he did three years prior due to the controversial fashion at the this Tuesday in Texas pay-per-view main event, when it's before his very eyes where Hogan used the ashes from Paul Bearer's urn to throw in the Undertaker's face and use it as an advantage to win. It was then announced that the championship would then be put on the line at the Royal Rumble match. 30 men, winner will become the undisputed champion, winner being Ric Flair who entered the match at number 3. Flair would temporarily hold the championship for a couple months during this time before then dropping it to the Macho Man Randy Savage at WrestleMania 8. Then the style reign only lasts about five or six months, as on the on the September 14, 1998 edition of Primetime Wrestling, Ric Flair would defeat Macho Man Randy Savage with a figure four leg lock when Savage passed out, shoulders were counted down, and we were declared new champion. This title reign didn't even last a month, as on the October 12, 1992 house show, 
Bret Hart would defeat Nature Boy Ric Flair to become the brand new WWF champion in Saskatoon, his very first title reign. Bret will hold the championship for about five-ish months, five or six months, and then would drop it to Yokozuna in the main event of WrestleMania 9, who would then, in a case of politics, then drop it to Hulk Hogan in an impromptu match afterwards. This would be Hulk, Ho Hulk Hogan's second-to-last title reign ever with the championship, as he would then drop the physical belt and the championship altogether at King the Ring to Yokozuna right before exiting the company and later signing with WCW. Yokozuna would dominate through 1993 into early 94 until he dropped the championship in the main event of WrestleMania 10 to Bret the Hitman Hart after already successfully defending the championship earlier that night against Lex Luger. Bret would dominate most of the year until dropping at Survivor Series that year to Mr. Bob Backlund in a throw-in-the-towel submission match. However, Mr. Backlund's reign would not last long as he would drop it three days later at a house show to Big Daddy Cool Diesel, who ended up holding this championship for over 580 days. During the, like, during the time he went on to feud with the likes of Bret Hart, end up going against Shawn Michaels, British Bulldog, uh, Psycho Sid, and so many others. Then the title reign would finally come to an end at Survivor Series 1995 against Bret Hart in no disqualification match, after which Diesel would end up turning into a tweener by attacking Bret Hart in frustration. This title reign for Bret Hart only lasted a few months until he lost it to the 1996 Royal Rumble winner Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12 in a 60-minute Ironman match, losing in overtime with a score of 1-0 following super kicks. Shawn would end up holding the championship throughout most of the year before dropping it to Psycho Sid in Madison Square Garden at Survivor Series in 1996. Sid's title reign sadly only lasted a couple of months until he dropped it back to Shawn Michaels in the Alamo Dome at the Royal Rumble. Now, Shawn Michaels was then scheduled to defend the championship on the February 13, 1997 edition of Raw, Thursday Raw Thursday, but he would vacate the championship claiming a knee injury and giving his infamous Lost My Smile speech before the very crowd. Originally, I thought In Your House Final Four was going to be a fatal four-way to determine the number one contender for the championship, but instead the match ended up, being a ma ended up being for the championship itself between Bret Hart, The Undertaker, Vader, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, the final four men of the Royal Rumble match. With the rule stipulation being that eliminations have to be a pinfall, submission, or being thrown over the top rope, where Bret Hart would end up winning the match, last eliminating The Undertaker. Sadly, this match reign only lasted one day, as the next night on Raw, thanks to the interference by Stone Cold Steve Austin, Psycho Sid would end up winning the championship from The Hitman. Then Psycho Sid went to drop the championship to The Undertaker of WrestleMania 13 in the main event, thus causing The Undertaker to finally become WWF champion for the first time in over five and a half years years after last holding it when he last dropped it at this Tuesday in Texas. Undertaker would hold the championship until SummerSlam 1997, 1997 dropping it once again to Bret the Man Hart, thanks to interference by the referee at the time, Stone, uh, Shawn Michaels. Speaking of which, Shawn Michaels ended up winning it three months later courtesy of the Montreal Screwjob from Bret the Man Hart, with the latter being having his final match at that time within the company before departing off to WCW. Shawn would hold the belt up until WrestleMania 14 when he lost it to Stone Cold Steve Austin. And the, fun, the night after, on the March 30th, 1998 edition of Raw, we would see the last time that the Winged Eagle Championship would represent the WWF Championship as Stone Cold would hand the belt over to Vince McMahon, or be more specific, drop it on his foot, and representative of the Big Eagle belt, where it had the blue strap and the old-school WWF logo, which we saw in the bottom left corner of the programs around 94. But this would not be the final time we would see the belt, as it would be reappear one final time on the September 28th, 1998 edition of Raw, the night after Breakdown in Your House. At the Breakdown pay-per-view, the WWF Championship was vacated after Stone Cold was pinned by both Undertaker and Kane simultaneously, vacating the belt, and the next night, in the Joel Lewis Arena, of McMahon was going to give the championship to either Kane or The Undertaker, but since the new WWF Championship belt that would be shown at Survivor Series was not ready yet, the Wing Eagle belt was used as a placeholder to represent the championship itself. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is all with the entire history of the WWF Wing Eagle Championship within the course of a 10-year period. From, 9th, from February 5th, 1988, up until it was retired as the physical active belt on March 30th, 1998, and then the final ever time we would see it on television, September 28th, 1998 edition of Raw. Let me know what you all thought in the comment section below. Who do you, when you think of the Wing Eagle, let me know in the comment section below, when you think of the Wing Eagle Championship belt, 
Who's the one wrestler you immediately think of when you see that belt? Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Stone Cold just because he was the last champion, Psycho Sid, any of them. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below and any matches you enjoyed were the, involving the Winged Eagle Championship over the years. So anyway, if you all enjoyed today's episode, please remember to leave a like, comment what you thought below, subscribe with that bell turned on if you're watching this on YouTube, and I will catch you all later on. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, and good day, everybody.